So here is shifting gears. Virgin Galactic is our next topic. It's trying to break a new frontier, sending tourists into space. Right, motor burn, everybody. We're going to space, Richard. 700 tickets have been sold to people who want that interstellar experience, including the zero gravity feeling. The company owned by billionaire Richard Branson plans to launch those flights late next year. The starting price for a seat is, oh yeah, $450,000. A Canadian will be one of the pilots flying customers or helping to fly customers into space. Jamil Janjua is a Royal Canadian Air Force pilot. He is at Virgin Galactic's Mojave facility in California. Jamil, so good to have you on the program. Uh, lots of reasons uh, I can imagine that people want to pilot space flights these days. But I understand it was three years ago you actually took a day off work and went and watched the first launch. Do you remember that moment? I'm, I'm guessing you do. Yes, absolutely. Indeed, David. Actually, uh, from the room I'm sitting in here in Mojave, California, it's literally out the window. Uh, there's a parking lot from which I watched uh, Virgin Galactic's uh, first and second launch to space uh, about three years ago with one of my sons. He was four at the time, and I skipped out of work at Edwards Air Force Base, uh, where I was a Canadian exchange officer and test pilot, and uh, it was kind of a fun way to play hooky with my son. Okay, so we fast forward now to... October, when you flew the, the, the aircraft that actually carries the spaceship for the first time, um, what happens next until you get a place uh, in, the, uh, in the spaceship's left, left pilot seat? So, yeah, this is all part of uh, the training and the progress uh, that it takes uh, as a Virgin pilot. So I have some fantastic mentors uh, in the pilot corps at Virgin, and we're really fortunate that young pilots like me come on board. Uh, those other test pilots uh, teach us how to fly the mothership first that you can see pictured behind me. Um, and eventually, as part of my training, I'll learn to support the operations in the mothership. And then eventually, with time, uh, I will find myself uh, in a spaceship, which would be awesome. Okay, so you've been behind an awful lot of horsepower or thrust of being an, a, 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 a fighter jet pilot. But what's the difference with what you're doing now? Well, I think as far as the mothership is concerned, you can see just looking at it, it's such a unique vehicle. So even people with my background as a test pilot, and I flew primarily fighter aircraft, uh, but others as well, um, look at the vehicle. It's got two fuselages with a wing that joins them, and four engines on the outboard, and we sit on one side of the vehicle. So uh, there's plenty to do that's different and, and exciting in a vehicle like that. Um, so it's an awesome learning process. It's, uh, it's a lot of fun to do, as you can imagine. Um, so I'm, I'm really just enjoying the moment right now and uh, in flying the mothership. And what's it like for your kids going to the playground and telling them what your dad does for a living? Do they sort of win those uh, what my parent does contests? I'm not sure they have them yet, which is probably a good thing, David. Um, but, you know, they grew up, I was an Air Force pilot for a long time in the Royal Canadian Air Force. And so um, my kids have grown up where most of our friends that came around the house were fighter pilots or test pilots. And so I don't think it's quite sunk in yet. I think they, uh, if they met you, they would probably ask you uh, what you fly because they, I think they think everybody does this. Yeah. Okay. Well, if they, they ask me, they would find out that uh, any kind of flying would probably not go well with me at the controls. But, you know, with you at the controls, of course, this is something you've done with, as you know, with the Royal Canadian Air Force. In fact, you, you uh, tried out for the Canadian Space Agency as well. When you think about where you have now come, and you're not exactly an old guy, uh, what, what do you look back on? Yeah, thanks very much for the compliment, David. Um, I look back on a path, a journey that's that's led me here in a way that I probably didn't expect. And I think that's a message that when I speak with young people, um, I like to pass to them is that sometimes life has these small twists and turns and sends you in directions that you don't necessarily uh, have planned out or you didn't expect. But um, my case is a perfect example whereby those can lead you to really fantastic uh, beginnings in this case for me with Virgin Galactic. So um, I look back on all the experiences that I think uh, whether I knew them or not at the time, led me here, and I'm quite thankful. Well, you know, just as circling back to your to your family for a moment, I mean, uh, you talk about the excitement of your job, but also there is, of, of course, danger. Um, there has been a, a fatal crash in this program, and it, it goes back to 2014. But do you um, do you feel that level of of risk intimately? Well, I think my background as a test pilot in the Air Force um, sort of, uh, I'll turn on lights for you. I'm sorry about that. Yeah, no problem. It's all good. This is how it works. You're a test pilot. Uh, you're, you, you fly spacecraft, but you're also responsible for keeping the lights on. 
Yes, correct. Yeah, yeah. so uh, we all have, uh, there's certainly a, a degree of humility that's required in this job as well. Um, I, you know, I think my background as a test pilot lends itself well to being integrated in programs like this and primarily where it's safety is our North Star and, and that's really the focus of everything we do. And so I think that my background professionally as an engineer as well lends itself to helping develop um, a safe and reusable way that we can open up access to space. And I'm really happy to be here and do that. Of course, there are significant costs, and I know you're not the one who's putting this program together, but you are a part of the program. Uh, and there are cynics uh, who who look at the the cost and say, you know, this is money that perhaps ought to be spent in in some other field, uh, or that it is only for the uber wealthy to essentially go off to space. Um, when you when you hear the kind of criticism, you know, what do you what do you say in response? You know, I think back to, again, my background as an engineer and understanding how certain aspects of our society have developed technologically. Um, <clears throat> and with beginnings like this, we're hoping to open up uh, certain technological advances that I think will make access uh, more accessible to all in the future. And I think when I, I look at the airline uh, industry as an example, and it wasn't that long ago that airline travel wasn't uh, as widely available um, in the interwar period. And Nowadays, it's very accessible to all. So I'm really hoping that our work here in, uh, at Virgin Galactic in my role uh, acts as a very small part that will really genuinely open uh, access to space um, for diverse groups that traditionally didn't have access. I, I wanna wrap up our conversation with just a curiosity thing. So it has been some time since the space shuttle program at NASA was retired, but um, I, I, not the youngest guy, I've been around for some of those space shuttle launches. And I remember even when you're, you know, five, six, seven kilometers away, it, it, if the earth is shaking, there's just an enormous amount of, of power in liftoff. You've been there for launches. What's it like? And so it's uh, ever so slightly different because uh, we have a focus on uh, a reusable and very safe way uh, to open up access to space. We're an air launch vehicle. so. Uh, the mothership launches the spaceship at altitude. Mm -hmm. uh, if you're watching from the ground, you see it with your naked eye. It's phenomenal. It is a jaw-dropping experience even just to watch. Um, but you really don't hear anything. I've also been in a chase aircraft where I watched it from the air, uh, the spaceship release uh, and ignite its rocket motor. Um, and again, you just see it and it is absolutely stunning and beautiful. Um, but you really don't hear much uh, from those distances. You know, you, you get to see it. It's all, it's all through the eye, all that experience. Well, um, listen, congratulations. And I understand you're uh, getting the opportunity to come back to Canada for the first time in a couple of years over, uh, over the holiday period. Hope you have a great visit. Great. Thanks very much, David. I'm uh, looking forward to introducing my boys uh, to the true meaning of winter and uh, some snow, and it'll be a lot of fun for them. Yeah, well, we'll probably be able to make good on that. Thanks a lot. Have a good one. Thank you, David. Have a nice day. Hi, I'm Vashi Capello's host of Power in Politics. See more of our show by subscribing to the CBC News Channel or click the link for another video.